But look, we, we want to switch and we want to talk to something that broke late in the day. We want to show you a video that surfaced this afternoon showing a confrontation between NDP leader Jagmeet Singh and two men. It happened on Parliament Hill earlier today. You can see the men following Singh and then one of them, we think, someone hurls an insult at Jagmeet Singh. Singh decides to confront them. Take a look at this. Corrupted bastard. What? Want to say something? What? Want to say something? Who was the man that? You got something to say? What's I mean? didn't say corrupted bastard, but Is I said... Is that what you said? No, no. I did not Who say said? that. Who said it? Somebody behind said me it? said that. Was it me? Was it you? No. You sure? If it was me, I'd admit it, buddy. Was it you or not? If it was me, I'd admit it. What'd you say then? I didn't say nothing. It wasn't me. It was a gentleman behind me, I guess. Who is it then? Point I it out. I have no idea who it was, buddy. My word. You sure it's not you? No. 100%. You're a coward. You're not going to say it to my face. That's what's up. Say what? You're if I said something face. like that to you, I'd admit it. All right. So we took our cameras to Parliament Hill to get some reaction from Singh's colleagues in the House of Commons. You can hear a group of protesters in the background who have been there since last week. We're dealing right now with an increasingly uh, dangerous and toxic mix for politicians of all stripes. And if you think that's dangerous, well, you're wrong. Um, I've had to run many gauntlets where I just have not felt safe at all. And I mean, beta bear. I, I got a pretty thick skin. Somebody's going to get hurt. And I think what happened today was an absolute uh, disgrace that a national leader was left by himself to defend himself when security just stood around and watched. I think ministers should have more security. I think the, the leaders of federal parties should also. You know, uh, Jack Mead is sadly insulted and, you know, sometimes almost physically aggressed by some people. I don't want him to have to defend himself physically, you know. Mr. Singh is a, a bit of a lightning rod because he's, he's recognizable and uh, there's so much rhetoric about the Liberals and the NDP. Um, I, I, I find it really scary and I worry that something is going to happen to people, uh, to a politician. All right, we're going to bring in the power panel to talk about this. Shachi Curl, Michelle Cadario, uh, Kate Harrison here with me in the studio, and Francoise Boivin. Shachi, uh, what, what did you make of what we saw there? We have seen these protesters around Parliament really since the convoy, um, following videotaping, uh, journalists, uh, MPs. Mr. Singh has had this happen to him before. What was your reaction from what you saw? I mean, it's uh, it, it makes you sick to your stomach at a, at a number of levels. First of all, important to to realize and acknowledge and be appreciative of the fact that it did not escalate into violence. Mr. Singh is actually a very physically fit man. I don't. I think he could have handled himself in that. I think he has martial arts <laughs> training as yeah, well. Which, yes. uh Uh, so, I wouldn't so tangle with him. No. Let's, yeah, let's, let's just, you know, be grateful for the restraint. But I'm also very glad that he didn't shove Singh or do something like that, right? It, it could have gotten very bad very quickly. I, I spend a lot of time talking to Canadians uh, in, in my world as a pollster and trying to better understand, like, what is going on with civil society? What is going on with discourse? The man who lied about hurling that insult is a little weasel. What is going on with people at... Like what? What drives somebody to 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 troll a Terry Fox memorial ceremony, or or always be following leaders or journalists? You know, with their like, what what gives? What's up with that? I don't get it. But I do think it is, it's like this this toxic vicious cycle of um, polarization and increasingly heightened language that comes at times even from the rhetoric of our own political leaders. The Conservatives don't want to talk about it. They are so weak and spiteful. And then people react to that, they respond to that, it gets angrier and flintier. We're a long way from love and courage. And I'm not going to uh, condemn Mr. Singh for losing his cool. And let's, let's just, you know, be grateful for the restraint. And I'm not going to uh, condemn Mr. Singh for losing his cool. And now let's, let's just, you know, be grateful for the restraint. He did not physically lose his cool, but you could see he was ticked off. Um, hmm. And, and I, I, I feel for him. I feel for anybody who has to deal with that. And yes, at times they're going to snap. I've also seen an era of politician, and I'm not saying what, what was happening to them in that moment was acceptable. It was assault. <laughs> Assault. A threat or attempt to inflict offensive physical contact or bodily harm on a person, 
as by lifting a fist in a threatening manner, that puts the person in immediate danger of or in apprehension of such harm or contact. Michelle, like, we're seeing this a lot with Mr. Singh. We're seeing a lot with politicians. There are women municipal politicians all over Quebec who have been bowing out because of the way they're being treated. Just sorry, I, I spoke over you. There, you go ahead. No, I was just going to say, like, I think we all have to just kind of reflect. When they're, you're calling people names inside the House of Commons chamber, you're going to expect to be called names outside of the House of Commons chamber. You're right. It's fact. And I think every single one of those MPs who are, you know, flailing insults, calling people liars and kind of being um, histrionic inside the chamber should kind of take a good look at themselves to see what kind of example they're setting. Because if it's OK inside, then why isn't it outside? You're right again. I'm not saying it's a nice thing, but Mr. Singh should have risen above it and he should have ignored it. And he should not in any way have gotten in the face of any other person. He has to be better than that. Watching that video, my first thought was, holy cow, is is this actually going to escalate? Like, And the aggressor was not the jerk who was calling people names when, when I was watching that video. You're right. I think that Mr. Singh, upon reflection, uh, is going to look at that and really regret those five minutes. It is not how he should have acted. And I think that every single MP who who was you know speaking today should be ta- thinking about their own um, uh, reflecting on how they actually conduct themselves within the chamber. There is no room for violence. Quite frankly, name calling is beneath them all. The man who lied about hurling that insult is a little weasel. And so you know, answer respect with respect and show a better example. But. Uh- Okay, that, that I that's an intro that I that's an intro that I that's an, that I that but uh, okay that, that I that's a cat got your tongue. Cat got your tongue. Cat got your tongue. What's the matter? Cat got your tongue. Cat got your tongue. Cat got my tongue. Cat got my cat got my tongue. <laughs> an interesting response to Mr. Singh's response. Francoise, I, I wonder what your thoughts are, and also, like, on the name-calling thing, if you watch Question Period today, it was endless, directed at the Deputy <laughs> Prime Minister, Christopher Freeland, um, you know, and, and, and with a little bit of shooting back. The Conservatives don't want to talk about it. They are so weak and spiteful. With a little bit of shooting back. He has courted the support of misogynists and cozied up to the far right. With a little bit of shooting back. Mr. Speaker, the leader opposite is showing us exactly what shameful, spineless leadership looks like. And I don't know if this is fighting fire with fire or if there's a race to the bottom happening in politics, but just what are your thoughts on it? Uh, definitely, it was uh, absolutely uh, horrible. I mean, I, I felt I felt bad for Christian Freeland. And thank God she was able to defend herself, but it must be so frustrating. I remember being in the House of Commons at the time uh, of the uh, last report of, of, of sponsorship. I entered politics after the whole event and to be called by conservatives corrupt and fraudster and this and that, it just comes to you. I understand what Michelle is saying about what Jagmeet should, uh, should have done and not maybe go in front of these people and just put put them up to their face. What did you call me? Who mm. said that? Because, you, you know, at some point in time, especially after so many times, you just, you're human. You're a human being. I know that uh, we're supposed to be perfect when we're politicians, but at some point in time, there's a limit. And as long as he doesn't use any force, at first I'm thinking, please don't go see those guys. Please don't, please don't, don't turn around. Just walk away. But it's so, it's so human. And when you see the signs, uh, I mean, you can like the prime minister or not, uh, really disagree strongly with him. But to call your prime minister a traitor? Uh, and he has been, you know, kind of courteous about it, but challenging yeah. somebody, I recall, during the election campaign previous, I think he confronted somebody who had made a rather bigoted comment. Well, about and someone on Parliament Hill followed him all the way to the Chateau mm-hmm. Laurier one time, right. too, so he's been confronted so, up there before. So right? um, this is not new to him. I think what I observed was an escalation 
of that situation. Uh, and I, I'm inclined to agree with Michelle. I think he'll look back at that and maybe wish that he had done things a little bit differently. I do think mm -hmm. that we're at a risk of, I would say, tut-tutting the tone um, of politics because typically if it's working well, politicians are reflecting the frustrations and concerns that come forward from the people. Yes, they need to lead by example, but I also think that the reason why we're seeing a lot of frustration, um, you know, spillover in protests and people kind of taking this up with politicians is because they are very upset at how things are going right now. So that is not to suggest that, you know, these guys name calling is uh, is the right thing to do by any means. Um, we are at a point in our politics where we're becoming a very divided nation. And I think that you're seeing that play out more and more on Parliament Hill and in protests that happen across the country. Like, at a certain point, yes. political leadership needs to get back to debating ideas and solutions rather than attacking character because it has become an epidemic since the pandemic. David, it's why you see 60% of Canadians despairing of the fact that there is no room for political compromise in this country yeah. anymore because we've lost the language to do it. It is why they say they increasingly feel like uh, political orphans, not just because of, of party policies, but because of what they're seeing out there and, and how they, they may vote for a party, but they're not all in on the tactics and the language and the tone of their party leaders or the politicians. But these weak and spiteful Conservatives... It's also a lot to do with the normalization of what we've seen south of the border. And I'm not right. saying it didn't exist in Canada. So don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that we've, you know, oh, we've we've imported it. We were also innocent prior to. Um, but, you know, you, you watch what happened around January 6th. You watch what happened around the way people absolutely, some people lost their minds around the pandemic and things like mask restrictions and, and mandates. And, and uh, you know, I I hear Kate on the on the on the notion that people are upset, but I think something else has happened and it's been normalized because leaders do not have the gumption and the courage to go to their bases and say, don't act like that at my rallies. Don't act like that on my behalf. Don't do that if you're upset. You know, channel that into political action. Make sure you're registered to vote. Join a campaign. Go door to door. Actually participate in the democratic process to make a change. Protesting your elected officials is exactly what participating in democracy is. Instead of doing whatever these people are doing, I don't understand the point of it. Does social media drive some of it? You know, you get your clip on YouTube, you feel really special. Great. But mm. I don't know how it's, it's actually improving or affecting democratic process in this country at all. Free speech and the right to protest government is the foundation of democracy without the right to call Jagmeet Singh a corrupted bastard. Canada would not be a democracy. How do you not understand this? Like, I, I, think, I think back to, you know, I, I agree with you. People are angry. They're frustrated. Cost of living has got them all riled up, and, and, and understandably so. But I, I think about how our, our politicians respond to it, how leaders respond to it. I go back to when John McCain was running against Barack Obama, and that yep. woman stood up and said, he's a Muslim, he's from another country. And he said, no, no, he's a good man. You know, yeah. he's an American, he's a good man, he defended him. I don't know in 2024 if we see that in politics anymore. And I think I think we're worse off yeah, for it. Yeah, I, I, I'm sort of glass half full in terms of the US-Canada comparison on this. We do yeah. not have politicians looking to uh, incite violence um, as you know, some may say is happening south of the border. Like mm. we are, we are still, I think, actually uh, worlds apart in terms of the rhetoric that is happening south of the border and what we see play out in Canada. And you know, I, I take my co-panelist point. We've all knocked on a lot of doors. Um, I have not ever had somebody say, I don't like the tone of your leader or your sure. party as a reason to not vote for you. So unless that starts mm. coming forward in terms of people saying this is a ballot consideration for me, you can expect right. that the issues are going to continue to drive it and the polarization of those issues and the contrast to win out the day as opposed to the argumentation around tone and messaging. Okay, uh, we're tied on time. So Michelle, just last word uh, uh, to you on this. I mean, is it something that won't change until voters demand it change? Because the way politics has gone with micro-targeting people at the edges, that big appeal to the middle isn't kind of there anymore. I mean, what are your thoughts? I hate to say it, but, you know, I almost think that it's not going to change until something very drastic and, and likely terrible happens, you know. Um, and I'm going to put this on the doorstep of Donald Trump, who first socialized the idea of name-calling to a much greater extent from the, pul from the podium um, and urging on cheers to, you know, lock her up um, as, a, as a start. 
And ever since then, that that acceptance and that that was almost like the grand okay, that okay, those things that you were might be thinking in your head, those things that you've, you know, started to put onto social media and tweet about at people, all of a sudden you can say in, in public and then you can start chanting and you can find like minded people and kind of um, create chaos. And that's somehow how you're going to get your point across. I would hate to see this happen, to this end in tragedy. But um, I'm, I'm not hopeful that it's just going to be everybody decides that we're going to behave better. I, I don't want to be the pessimist, uh, but I'm not even sure an extreme action will change it. I mean, Joe Cox was murdered in the United States. January 6th happened. Someone took a shot at Trump. Twice. And, and, oh, and, and then there was this, uh, this other most recent incident. So, uh, you know, uh, mm-hmm. there we are. Um, look, I, I want to thank you all uh, for, for being here with us on, on a pretty big news day. Thank the Power Panel. Shacha Curl, Michelle Cadario, Francoise Boivin, and Kate Harrison. Thank you all very much. Mm-hmm.